Hello, welcome to uh, Social Sciences and Law. Um, so this is coming to you from Worthing College and everything we say is relevant to both Worthing College and Haywards Heath College. Um, so the subjects we're gonna talk about tonight are law, so sociology, psychology, criminology. Um, there's also the applied law and the applied psychology. I can see this, um, yeah, numbers are going up there. We've got 70 odd people. So I'm just gonna chat for a moment until we get going properly, give people a chance to attend. Um, we're gonna give you a taste of the subjects. These are subjects that some of you won't have come across before. Most of you can't do these subjects at school. So um, they'll be new to you. Um, I'm gonna talk you through some highlights of the subjects, the kind of things that you would study, um, some of the skills involved to, to do well in the subject. And, um, there's an opportunity for you to ask any questions. So there's a, a Q and A, and if you use the Q and A for any questions, we'll answer those at the end. Um, it may be that some of the questions will be answered as we're going through the presentation. Um, otherwise, uh, we'll uh, we'll be able to answer those as we go through. Um, if you have any technical problems, could you answer? Could you put your, those into the chat? Somebody will be monitoring those, and they'll help you if you're unable to. Um, access the, the presentation or if it's gone very quiet for you. So once again, for people who are just joining us, we've got a, 115 people out there now. Um, this is social sciences and law. So um, I'm going to be talking about law and um, my colleague Kate, Kate Hall, I think she's out there. She's waving. Um, she's going to talk about psychology. So that's the A-level and the applied psychology. We've got Laura, Laura Harbrow from Haywards Heath. She's going to be talking about criminology and sociology, as is uh, Philippa Lloyd, who's the subject leader for sociology and criminology here at Worthing. So um, we are recording this uh, presentation and you'll be able to find it on the website uh, shortly afterwards. I think the, the recording is going on uh, tomorrow and any Q and A's will be going on later in the week. So you find all of that through our website. If there's anything you missed, you'd like to go back to, it'll be there. Um, yeah, so just for anybody who's coming on now, um, there'll be the Q&A. So if you have any questions, do stick them in the Q&A. We'll, we'll get round to answering them. We'll leave those until the end because it may be that some of it's things that we're going to cover through the presentation. Um, I think that's probably about time to get going. So once again, um, my name is Tim Westcott. I'm the Deputy Head of Learning here at, um, here at Worthing. And I, I teach law and the applied law subjects. Uh, my colleague Kate teaches psychology, that's the A-level and the applied subjects, the applied uh, psychology. Philippa teaches sociology and criminology here at Worthing, and Laura teaches uh, sociology and criminology at Haywards Heath. Can we have the next slide, please? So those are the subjects we're going to cover. Um, social science is a very diverse group of subjects, so and they all have people at their hearts, so um, why people act the way they do, what happens when things don't necessarily go smoothly, how to how society works um, from various points of view, from a sociological point of view, from a law point of view. Could we have the next slide, please? So one of the first decisions that you'll have to make is whether you're going for an A-level type course or an applied course. And you've probably heard of BTECs. When we talk about applied courses, we're usually talking about BTEC, although the criminology is an applied course and it's it's a different exam board, but it's, it's a WJEC similar kind of thing. And they are very different kinds of courses. So for example, you could do law A-level or the applied law, and you could do psychology A-level or the applied psychology. The A-level courses are um, traditional A-levels. They're academic type subjects. Um, they're examined at the end. So one of the skills is to have got a good memory so that you can, can retain all that information over the two years. Obviously, you know, there's lots of help to um, be assessed throughout to build up all those skills and that knowledge. But all the assessment is at the end of two years. So there's no exams at the end of the first year that count towards the actual A-level itself. Um, the applieds are a bit different. So the applieds have a different style of exams. They're generally aimed at people thinking of working in that field. Um, so the applied law, you would do things like write letters to clients. Um, it's very much focused on um, a more practical approach to the subjects. So you have exams, um, external assessments, but you um, you would do them throughout the year. So not all at the end of two years. You would generally do one in the January of each year, 
and you'd have the opportunity to redo it um, in the summer if you needed to retake it, try to improve your grade. And half the marks come from um, coursework. Now, Philip is going to tell you how that's a bit different in criminology later on, but essentially that's, that's the, the model. So half in coursework, half in um, assessments, more vocational type assessments, whereas the A-levels are much more academic. So um, very often the this content of the course is quite similar. So one of the big questions is uh, how, are you, how, how do you thrive? Uh, you know, are you somebody who thrives on exams or are you somebody who thrives on meeting lots of deadlines and being uh, very good at building up that, that, that store of knowledge and those grades as you're going along? They're all worth the same. So you can get to university with an A-level and you can get to university with applied courses. They've got the same currency. Um, so you shouldn't be worried about which is the most valuable. It's very much about how you like to study. Could we have the next slide, please? Hi, so my name's Kate. Um, I'm a psychology teacher at Worthing. And um, I was just going to show you a couple of quotes that we got from um, students at college to just give you an idea of how popular the subjects are at college um, at both Haywards Heath and Worthing. Um, so I'll just give you a moment to read what they've said. We do get quite a lot of student voice opportunities um, at college to hear what students think of our courses and they all are very positive about um, the social sciences. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so that's back to me and the law. What I should say, of course, is that all our courses are worth one single A level. So some subjects, for example, health and social care has applied that are worth three A levels. That's all you would do. Whereas all the courses we're talking about today are worth one single A level. Now, in terms of law, both courses cover uh, criminal law, the law of tort, which is about things like negligence, being able to sue an individual. Um, what I'm teaching at the moment is um, the law of non-fatal offences. So that comes up in both the A-level and the applied course. So we're looking at um, different kinds of assault, so assault and battery, ABH, GBH, that's actual bodily harm and grievous bodily harm. And yesterday I was teaching a lesson on actual bodily harm. So that's where someone has more than trivial injuries, but not really serious injuries. And that's something the law's got to um, assess, you know, how do we how do we categorize certain kinds of offence? And a really interesting case there concerns um, a man who um, attacked his girlfriend. He um, he sat on her and he cut off her ponytail. And the question for the courts was, was that uh, bodily harm cutting off someone's ponytail? And oh, my lights have gone off. Um, was that was that bodily harm? And I, I'm sure you're thinking about that for a moment. So I'll give you a moment to talk about whoever you're with. Do you think that the courts uh, decided that cutting off someone's ponytail was just trivial harm, was had a battery? Um, or was it um, actual harm? Or was it serious harm? Did, it, did that count as grievous bodily harm? The answer is it was actual bodily harm. The court said that um, that was a bit sexist. They did say to a woman, her hair is a very important part of her body and um, harming that is the same as harming her. So um, he was found guilty of actual bodily harm. In contract law, we look at um, what can go wrong with contracts. And one of the things that goes wrong is um, frustration, something that happens that stops a contract being performed. So very topical at the moment, all sorts of contracts are gonna be frustrated um, with the, the COVID um, dilemma. So um, it's a very interesting case there called Saki Roglu, one of the best case names I think going, Saki Roglu and Nobody Thor. And in Saki Roglu, there was a contract to ship um, nuts from uh, the east coast of Africa up to Europe. Now they would have gone through the Suez Canal, but the Suez Canal was closed. And so they, had, they were faced with a journey that was four times as long. And the question is, did that frustrate the contract? Did that mean that the contract was something different to what they'd anticipated? And the answer was no that they hadn't said how they were going to ship the, the nuts, which route they were going to take, just that they had to do it. So what looked like a profitable contract suddenly made them a huge loss when they couldn't take the anticipated route. So the law deals with dilemmas. The law deals with when things go wrong and, um, and how should they deal with it? And one of the really good things about law is there often isn't a single right answer. So um, it's up to one of the skills of uh, lawyers 
is to argue their client's case as effectively as possible. And that's what you do in lessons as well. So there's like quite a lot of debating, um, sometimes arguing, about how the law should apply to a number of uh, scenarios. We work closely with a number of uni universities. So uh, Chichester University did a presentation uh, just two weeks, the week before half term, um, to our second year students. So they have a taste of what it's like to study at university level. Um, and also some advice on applying to universities and how to write their personal statements. And as it says at the bottom there, we're all senior examiners, so we're very well placed to give students a really close guidance on exactly what's required to be successful in our subjects. Next slide, please. Okay, hi, I'm Philip Lloyd, um, subject lead for sociology and criminology, and I'll just talk uh, briefly about sociology. So um, obviously Hayward Heath and Worthing Colleges, we are um, delivering the course in the same way. So whether you start at Hayward Heath or whether you start here at Worthing, it doesn't matter, you'll be following the same curriculum. So when you start studying sociology, we start with education. Um, so we look at sociology through different topics. And so we all start with education because you will come straight from school and doing your GCSEs, well, hopefully, and then we will be looking at, well, why is it that different people do well or badly in different subjects? Because in sociology, we're looking at how different social groups might experience the world. So say in education, why is it that girls always outperform boys or people from working class backgrounds don't do as well as those from richer backgrounds. So for sociology, we're kind of thinking about things like that. So we're looking at what happens in the classroom. How are teachers affecting your um, ability to succeed? Do they label you and all these sorts of things that make you question uh, your social world around you? We also look at different theories and how they might explain education. You know, what's the role of education? Is it to keep you kids off the street or is it there to prepare and help the economy? After you've done uh, education, we then look at research methods, which is how sociologists go about studying it. So when you look at education, you look at different sociological studies. And so in research methods, we look at how they would have carried out those studies. So once you've done that, you will then look at families. So again, all the different types of families that we live in. So in sociology, we look at things that you're familiar with, but maybe in an unfamiliar way. It would make you see the world in a different way. So we look at families and the different diversity in families, and we look at how maybe different social groups might experience family in different ways. You know, what's it like for a woman in a family? Do they do all the housework and look after all the kids? Is marriage better for men than women? We're literally, again, we're looking at social categories and our experiences. These theories that I've mentioned before will come through each of the topics we look at. So we'll have like functionist theory, Marxist theory, feminist theory, the new right, all these theories have a view on what family's like, what education's like, and so on. So in the first year, you look at families, education, and methods. And in the second year, we look at crime and deviance uh, theories and beliefs. So in crime and deviance, one of our, our probably most popular modules, you know, why do people commit crime and looking at a range of different theories to do with that, you know, do people commit crime because they're forced into it because of capitalism, you know, that's what Marxists would say, or are they doing it as an active choice, you know, which other theorists might think. So we look at crime and deviance, and we look at other theories, again, not a lot of theory in sociology, and then we look at beliefs. So not just like religious beliefs, but you know, why people believe what they do, some of those weird and wonderful things, what does, what do beliefs offer people? Why have we got extremists? You know, why have we got fundamentalists? You know, look at what's happened today. We've had a terrorist attack, haven't we, in, in Italy, I think it is. And, you know, that's, is it because of people's beliefs pushing people forward? So it's a really interesting way of looking at the world. So hopefully that gives you a bit of a flavor of sociology. So we're looking at things that are familiar, but in a sociological way through theories and through studies. And this is a, a traditional academic A-level where you'll learn this course over two years and then you'll have three exams at the end. So hopefully that gives you an interest into, and, and an insight into what we do. So I'll pass over to Laura, who's gonna talk about criminology. Um, so criminology is done at, at Worthing and Haywards Heath. Um, and Laura's gonna talk about that now. Hi everyone, as Philippa said, I'm the criminology teacher at Haywards Heath, but everything that we do at Haywards Heath is also parallel and mirrored to how Worthing teach it as well. So we go through everything at the same time. So if I just introduce and kind of talk about how criminology is assessed, because of it's slightly different to an A-level, 
And then I'll get into what the subject content is that we'll do over the next two years. And so criminology kind of sits, I would say, about halfway between a BTEC and an A-level. It's a widget course. So it's made up of internal assessments that kind of work like um, coursework. And they're also made up of exams. So each year, every year on, in the December, you'll do an internal controlled assessment. So that's when you sit um, and we watch you for probably for about two days, um, complete all the work that you've done up until then in a kind of exam um, base. But again, it's kind of similar to coursework. And then up till uh, Christmas to May, it will follow kind of an A-level structure where we, um, you learn the content in class and you sit an external exam with Widget in May. And this follows the same process in both years. So criminology is just the study of crime. So we look at crime in our society and over the two years, we do this in lots of different aspects and lots of different ways. In unit one, so with my students at the moment, what we're doing is we're looking at changing awareness to crime. So first of all, we look at lots of different types of crime. So we look at crime like white collar crime, state crime, hate crime, and we analyze all of these. And we look at who are the offenders of these crimes? Who are the victims? Is this something that we see a lot in the media? Or is it something that's maybe hidden? Why is it hidden? Is it because of maybe the upper classes have more control over our media? And we'll also look at some case studies and some stuff that you probably would have seen in the media yourself. For example, we look at Bernard uh, Madoff um, when we look at white collar crime and we investigate all of those. And then also in unit one, what um, most of the students enjoy is we do campaigns for change. So we look at campaigns um, for change in our society. For example, we look at family led campaigns like Sarah's Law, um, which obviously we'll go into in more detail, but and then you also decide what you're passionate about and what you, if you had the chance, what would you change in society? Would you want a change in funding? Would you want a change in awareness for something? Would you want a change in law? A lot of my students are considering um, designing their campaign around homelessness, because at the moment it's still illegal in the UK. So a lot of them are thinking of surrounding their campaigns for change around kind of this idea of vagrancy. Um, and this is all something that goes into their controlled assessment in December. After December, after Christmas, we move on to unit two. And this is all about thinking, why do people commit crime? Was it about us that makes people commit crime? Is it the structure of society? And this is what feeds into quite well. If you do sociology, it complements it quite well. Um, and psychology as well, because you look at the same theories, but you apply it very differently. So we'll look at biological theories. Is it, you know, uh, your DNA makeup that makes people commit crime? Or we'll look at, um, as I said, structural theories and sociologist theories. And in this kind of um, term, we look at different kind of big names. Like we'll look at Freud, if any of you have heard of them, or we'll look at like Karl Marx with Marxism, and we'll assess all of this and kind of see why someone commits crime. And again, um, January to May, that follows more of an A-level structure, and that's what you'll sit your exam on. When you come back, year two, we move on to unit three, and this is the crime scene to courtroom. And this is the one that most people find the most interesting. So we look at when a crime happens, and we look at the crime scene and everything about it. We'll look at the evidence, and um, we'll look at fingerprints, what is it about fingerprints? Can we lift them ourselves? And we'll have a go at doing that. And we'll look at the whole process from prosecution. We'll look at the court and trial process. Um, and we'll go through all of this. And it's really interesting. And it leads us on quite nicely as well to unit four. So that's our last um, topic in the second year. And we look at the criminal justice system in England and Wales. And we look at our prison reform system, which I know... Um, lots of people when they choose to do criminology are very, very interested in. So we look at our kind of forms of social control in our society and we kind of evaluate, are these effective? Are people being reformed? Are they affected in people being deterred? Um, and we also have a chance to look at prisms again um, in the bridge the gap from year one to year two, where you'll do your own prisons project as well. 
So it is something that's kind of consistent throughout the course because we know that's been highlighted to us as something that students find very interesting. But overall, over the two years, we learn every aspect or quite a lot of aspects about crime. And overall, it's something that the students find really interesting. Um, and as I said, it follows a budget course as well, which is something we can go more into. But yeah, I'll pass over to Kate now, who will tell you about psychology. So next slide, please. Okay, so um, psychology would be described by most people as the science of mind and behaviour. So it's quite important to understand that if you do psychology, you are taking on a science course and it has a lot of the academic rigour of, of a science course. Um, what we study is people and we study all sorts of aspects of people. And the thing to remember about all the psychology courses, both the applied, the applied psychology BTEC and the A-level, is that they're meant to be general introductions to all sorts of aspects of human behaviour and understanding all sorts of aspects of human behaviour. So we look at all sorts of things like why we forget some things and remember other things. Why is it that when you go from one room to another, you go to get something and then instantly forget what it was that you'd gone in for? And why is it that coming back will help you recall what it was? Um, we might look at, for example, um, obedience and conformity. Why do people do as they're told? This is particularly interesting when we look at what's happening in lockdown at the moment and whether people will do what they're told and why that is. Um, and why we conform to other people or why sometimes we don't want to conform and we want to be very different, stand out. How do we bring about change in society? How, how is it that we're able to change people's minds? Then we consider things like um, the development of attachments between babies and their parents. How does that attachment develop? Why does it develop? What's it for? What happens if you don't form that attachment? Um, we consider the effects of, of daycare. Um, we consider, we, we then go on and consider things like mental illness, which is what draws an awful lot of people to psychology and is, is what they're interested in studying. And we will look at explanations of mental illness and also potential treatments and understanding what the causes are and how we can help people. Um, and we also look at the biological effect, the, the biological explanations of people's behavior. Um, running through both courses, whether you do BTEC or A-level, is a really important aspect of research. So because it's a science, it's about investigating people. So you have to be able to find out what makes people tick and you have to be able to do that in a controlled way. One of the difficulties, though, is that human beings, when you study them, they tend to change their behaviour. So we have to do lots of work on how to investigate human beings. And we also have to collect data on them and then we have to be able to manipulate that data. So there is a maths component and I, I will talk a little bit more about that later. In terms of content, the difference between BTEC and A-level isn't massive. It tends to be about the emphasis that they make. So we'll do very similar theories, for example, about how memory works, but we might use those theories in different ways. Um, what tends to happen is in applied psychology, but in the applied psychology BTEC, there's much more of a focus on how that information is applied, the clues in the title, um, how that information is applied to human beings. In particular, on the applied psychology BTEC, for example, you look at trying to understand causes of aggression, you look at trying to understand consumer behavior, so why people behave the way they do in shops. Um, and also at um, gender and explaining and understanding gender differences between individuals. So we look at various different bits of what makes people tick. It's not just mental illness, and that's quite important for you to understand. And it's not, and it also does contain quite a bit of practicals, and you have to be willing to take part in practicals and carry out research investigations, handle the data from that, um, and, and do those practicals in class. Um, there are some commonly asked questions that we're all going to go through about our subjects shortly, and I think that will bring up some, of, might answer some of the questions about the differences between applied psychology, BTEC, and A level. So I'll do a little bit more on that later. So that gives us, uh, that gives you hopefully an idea of the sorts of things that we um, study in psychology. So next slide, please. Okay, so we're going to talk now about what what you might do after uh, doing these courses with us, and. Um, Obviously, university is a very popular choice for uh, for all those subject areas. Um, 
something to mention is that for um, students going for the very competitive universities that want the, um, the A and B grades, we have an Aspire course. So that's not specific to social sciences, that's uh, something that's cross college, but that um, helps prepare students for going into very competitive universities, applying at the very highest level. Also for law, a handful of the top universities require a special entrance exam alongside A-levels or BTECs, and that's called the LNAT, the Law National Admissions Test. And um, we give um, special tuition for students taking the LNAT, um, how to write the kind of essay that's required and how to approach the, um, the test, uh, it's an, an aptitude test. Beyond that, um, there's a number of non-degree routes into law. So legal apprenticeships are an increasing trend um, and law firms are competing for the best young people to come and work for them. So more and more people uh, at 18 with very good A-levels would go straight into a law firm and as an apprentice level. And there's a certain attractions about not going to university. And that's something that you know, more of our students are actually considering. Um, Kate's going to talk now about progression into psychology routes. So to do um, a degree in psychology, you don't need to have done psychology A-level, um, but it helps and students who've done a psychology A-level will generally find that the first year of the degree covers some of the same material that they've done. In terms of careers, if you want to do a specialist career in psychology, you'll need to do further, further work after your degree. So you'd start with a psychology degree. And then if you wanted to be, for example, an educational psychologist, you might do um, an educational psychology course. You might want to go into teaching, in which case you'd need a, a, a teaching qualification. Um, you might want to go into clinical psychology, in which case you'd need to do further work. That's working with people with mental health, for example. Having said all of that, there is virtually no career that psychology doesn't really help with. It's all about people and understanding people and most jobs involve working with people. So we get students on the psychology course who do all go on and do all sorts of things when they leave here, almost any degree you can think of, because it counts as a science um, A level. Um, it won't stop you going on and doing anything that requires a science A level as well. So we do have, for example, students who go on to study medicine who have done psychology as one of their sciences. So it does count as a science for, um, for medicine. Um, but really, it will help you with any degree that you're interested in doing it or in doing or any career that involves working with people in any way. So obvious things would be to, uh, things like social work, for example. Um, but that's also true of the other social sciences, as I'm sure Philippa will say. Hi, so there's um, lots of different options, like Kate just said, similarly with criminology and sociology is they're all about kind of understanding society and understanding people. So this leads us to lots of different options. For example, social work in different charities, because we explore kind of how our institutions in society work and what we could do to improve these. Um, we look at what's working and what's not in our society. How can we help different social groups? All of this feeds into people having that kind of interest in social work and charities. Um, with criminology directly, it obviously has strong links to the criminal justice system. We've had lots of students that go on to join the police, and that was their main aim in doing criminology with that in mind. Um, but then also just kind of all aspects of the criminal justice system. As I said, we focus a lot on policy. So a lot of people have wanted to enter into the civil service or be kind of involved in policy making or perhaps research. But as well, a lot of people might want to be in the kind of prison service, a prison officer. Um, I spoke to someone last year who wanted to be a prison teacher. So this was something that they were doing because they wanted to do a teaching degree. And I thought that would ease them quite nicely into working into that field. And also probation officers and things like that. Um, like Kate said, with psychology, it kind of feeds into kind of all subjects. These are written subjects where you develop your written skills, the same with law. So it really does feed into if you were going to do anything at university, they are really useful skills that we learn over the next two years that you can transfer to any degree if you did choose to do a degree. Um, or if you chose to go in another path, you do learn very valuable skills that I think are very transferable to anything that you might choose to do in the future. Thank you. Next slide, please. Okay, so just a little bit about enrichment. So obviously we um, 
like to uh, apply our learning outside of the classroom as well. <laughs> um, <clears throat> in criminology, we've taken trips to, with some brilliant um, visits to the uh, magistrates courts in Brighton and Lewis Crown Court. Really, really interesting for students to actually see that legal process happening. Um, of course, because justice is a public thing. So, you know, it's everyone's, you know, you can go and see justice happen. So that, that's been some fantastic uh, trips there. We've also had people come in from Prevent um, to talk about fundamentalism and extremism, which was, uh, again, really useful for criminology, but that was actually a sociology uh, speaker. Just to, again, another um, example of how people's beliefs affect uh, society. We've had an expert witness come in who's like a cell site analyst working on cases to locate phones in certain places in crimes, uh, really interesting. And we've had the police came in, talked, um, did a session on hate crime as well. And then in psychology, there's trips to the uh, Bethlehem Hospital, which obviously, um, well, <clears throat> it's now a museum um, and it's kind of giving you the history of how people with uh, psychiatric illness was, uh, were treated. And there's revision con uh, conferences and the chance to yeah uh, meet our past students. In fact, that's not just in psychology. A lot of students obviously keep in touch, and we like to get them in to you know tell our students what it's like to study our subjects after A level. So there's lots of enrichment um, that we can offer. Okay, next slide. Okay, so um, a couple of questions that we often get asked, and I want to particularly talk about the second one. So if I want to go on and do a law degree, should I do a level law? We get asked that quite a lot. And the answer is, it's not compulsory. So no law degree requires a level law to get onto it. However, the reality is way more than half of students on each law degree have got a level law. Um, it's not uh, a benefit, but neither is it a hindrance. Every university accepts it right up to Oxford and Cambridge. Um, but it, it tells you whether you like law, you know, at the moment for you, it's an idea, you know, you've heard bits and pieces about law, but um, it's, it's something that tells you whether you have an aptitude for it, whether it's what you think it's going to be, and it's a really good taste, it's a good introduction to the subject, so our students who come back who've done the first year of their law degree say that they had a real head start over students who'd never done law before, just in knowing how law works and knowing how to approach the subject. Um, so I think, yeah, it's it's something that's absolutely not compulsory, but then it isn't compulsory to do a law degree to go on and be a lawyer. There's all sorts of routes after other degrees as well. OK, uh, next slide, please. OK, uh, a couple of, uh, of questions we quite often get asked is, you know, what's the difference between sociology and psychology? Um, I, hopefully you've kind of got a flavour for this idea that sociology is about study, about studying society, about groups of people, like we look at social class and gender and ethnicity. So we're really looking at the societal and group aspect of society, whereas uh, psychology is more about the mind and thinking. And as Kate was saying, much more scientific based. And I think, you know, as we find out more and more about the brain and how, it, you know, and our mind, then obviously it becomes increasingly scientific. So they both work really well together, but they are distinctly different. And then I was just thinking, just maybe also the difference between sociology and criminology, you know, kind of a key thing there. I think Laura alluded to the, the, one of the main differences is the way they're assessed. Criminology really is, you know, very much half of it assessed um, through this controlled assessment, which is an eight hour controlled assessment that students undertake at Christmas, you know, very intensive, eight hour uh, control assessment and one exam, whereas sociology has those, uh, is that traditional A-level style. Yeah, so sociology, obviously we study crime, but as only one part of our subject, whereas criminology, obviously you've really got to have that of real interest in, in, in crime. And we look at it in that detail and every aspect of it is why people do it and how it's treated in the criminal justice system. So it, they are really distinctly different. So hopefully that answers any questions surrounding that. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so um, there is a couple of questions here that have already come up in the chat. Um, can I do sociology, psychology and criminology without too much overlap? Yes, the, lots and lots of um, our students do both. And actually applied law is quite often taken alongside criminology. What we find is that there's quite a lot of, um, th that students enjoy the overlap because often we're talking about the same ideas, but from very different perspectives. I'm really aware that we haven't got much time. So I'm gonna just try and whiz, whiz through these. Um, is there a lot of maths? 
So maths on A-level psychology is a, a substantial part of it. It takes up 10% of the course. So you will do in your exam, 10% of your exam will be assessing maths, math skills, um, but it's pretty much no harder than what you're doing at GCSE. So you do need a grade four to do maths, but you do need to be comfortable with manipulating data and you do need to be able to do that under exam conditions. So that's something to, th to think about. The other big one is about the difference between A-level and BTEC. Um, in term, I've talked already about content, but in terms of how they're structured, the main difference is assessment. As Tim was talking about earlier, in the BTEC, you get coursework, which isn't in the A-level. The A-level is a linear A-level with three exams at the end of two years, whereas the BTEC has slightly more coursework in the first year than the second year, but it averages out at 40% over the um, whole course. So you do do coursework, but you do slightly more in the first year than you do in the second year. So really, really, that's the main thing to consider is the, the type of assessment um, model that they use. So that there's a difference between them. I think there are other questions that we'll try and deal with um, it, 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 just towards the end now. So I'm going to leave that for now. Okay, so um, if we could uh, finish off with some of these questions. So, um, um, Kate, I think, um, is there, so, so sociology and psychology, uh, would you cover these? In fact, I'll answer this one in health and social care. As an element of both, yes, there's, there's health and social care units that cover elements of psychology and there are health and social care units that cover elements of sociology. It's not quite the same as studying them at full A level. So there are students who do uh, the single sized health and social care course alongside both of those A levels. So they go together in a complementary way. Um, if you did health and social care alongside those A levels, there wouldn't be too much overlap. Um, exam boards, perhaps we could all answer on that one. So uh, A level law is OCR. Kate for um, um, psychology? So psychology is AQA for A-level and Pearson for VTEC. Um, sociology is AQA and criminology is WEDGEC, which is the Wel Welsh exam board. Worth saying that um, the WEDGEC and VTEC are, are different uh, providers of similar kinds of course. So there's no different status or different value of the courses. They're all worth one A-level. They're all two year courses. So all the courses we're talking about in this whole presentation are the same size in terms of being uh, worth one A level. Uh, there's a question just come in. Do you do three courses? Yes. So if, you're, if you um, have the entrance requirements for a level three course, now this, is, this applies to both Haywards Heath and to Worthing, and you'll have to look on the website for the specific entrance requirements for each course, then you, the requirement is that you study three courses to be a full-time student. Um, it's an interesting question here. Uh, will sociology help me to get into advertising and marketing careers? Philippa. <clears throat> will it help you to get into advertising? Oh, um, I'm not sure. I'm wondering whether psychology might be better talking about like the psychology of consumer behavior. Um, I think it would help if you wanted to get onto a marketing degree, for example, because of the skills that we would learn and you might understand, I guess, about the social characteristics of different people and how, you know, you might get some understanding of how you might reach those or have an understanding of those social groups. Um, I don't think we don't do anything that's particularly about marketing. I would suggest maybe a media uh, route might be better. Hope that's OK. That sounds great. Um, there's a question, what's the law of contract about? So contracts are what we make every day. Last time you bought a coffee in Starbucks or a can of Coke down the corner shop, you were making a contract. Now that's a contract, but also if you're chartering a ship for $100,000 a day, that's a contract. So basically it's about agreements. What happens when uh, agreements go wrong? Uh, how do we make, what are the requirements to make a binding agreement? And the same principles apply to all contracts, whether it's the big shipping contract or whether it's a, a coffee down, down the road. Um, so it's, it's a large area. Um, a lot of commercial law is based on contract law. So it's, it's a really good basis for a city type career, but it's also very interesting. There's a lot of logic in, in contract law. Um, 
would sociology or psychology be better if I wanted to go into teaching? Um, I'll answer that one. I think I don't think it would make a massive amount of difference. Uh, neither of them are national curriculum subjects for A levels, so you would need to have a national curriculum subject as well. Um, it depends what you wanted to go into teaching. It's psychology, we certainly do quite a lot of stuff on how children learn that can be really useful, but I think there's a lot that's really useful from sociology as well. I don't know, Philippa, you want to pick up on that. Yeah, I agree with what you're saying. It, you know, sociology and psychology, you can obviously go into teaching those, um, like myself and Kate have, but lots of students, I would say, go into teaching from social science courses. You know, you have a really good understanding of education from the education topic in sociology. And really understanding some of the pitfalls that schools might fall into in uh so i think it could be really useful if you wanted to go into primary teaching or a, you know, a kind of higher level uh teaching as well thank you um there's a few questions a few practical questions so um, can you change the options already chosen yes you'll be offered a curriculum guidance meeting um so if you've got your application into either college hayward teeth or worthing um, you'll be offered a, a, an interview and at that point the, the subjects you've already chosen would be a basis for the interview but you can change them and even later in the year you can say oh no I've, 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 these were my original choices but I thought to get back them again and I've changed my mind and so really nothing's absolutely fixed although we like you to think about them very seriously and make an informed choice nothing's fixed until you sign up um, in September of next year really. Um, entrance requirements, got a few questions about entrance requirements. Now, I don't want to list them all here now. Um, the entrance requirements are all listed on the websites for, for both colleges. There'll be the same entrance requirements right away across Chichester College Group. Um, and it's really important to have a look and see exactly what the requirement is. So, so I've had a question to say, do, do you need your grade four in maths? Some courses here you do, some not. So do check out and look at exactly what each course requires. Um, there's a question also about BTECs and A-levels and their equivalents. They, they are the same, so they're, a BTEC is worth the same as an A-level and the BTEC distinction star is worth the same number of UCAS points as an A-star. Now, universities are interested in someone's overall academic potential. And I think the only time I've had a problem with somebody on BTEC law is when they want, wanted to go on to a physics degree. And uh, the university wasn't very keen on looking at law because it didn't really give many transferable skills to physics. But beyond that, um, I know a, a very competitive university up the road, Sussex, wants um, AAB for, um, for entrance to their law degree, and they're very happy with BTECs alongside A-levels. Uh, there's a question about law, the law of tort. So the law of tort is a generic term for um, civil cases where you're suing someone, but it's not based on contract. I'll give you an example, the law of negligence. So if you've had a, if you've been knocked over by a car and you're suing the driver in, um, in negligence, that's an example of the law of tort. So it's where you're suing someone basically for causing you some harm, but it's not a criminal case. It's not the state trying to punish you. It's just uh, you're looking for compensation or to, to make someone stop doing something. If your neighbor is making too much noise, you might sue them in nuisance to make them stop. I think we've talked about the uh, job in teaching. Um, Okay, I think we've also run out of time now. So um, I think any of the Q and A's will be finished off. They'll be, um, they, they will go on the college website um, later on. I'd like to thank everyone very much for, um, for coming along and listening to us this evening. Um, and we look forward to seeing you at um, well, future events at both colleges. Thank you very much.